All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world, welcome back to the final match of the C Kappa Invitational Season and Force Group three. Stage. This is it. This is the end. We've got one more playoff left, and then C Kappa's done forever, and I can't imagine it's going to be coming back. But who knows? You never know. This C Kappa. Is, uh, we've had four glorious seasons, Trent. Can you believe this is this is it? This is the end. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I too love C Kappa 188 bet. The gods that make it possible. Thank you. What's the prize? Isn't this like a $25,000 prize pool or some shit? I don't know. You know what? Who knows? I'm going to look it up. I bet it's on Liquipedia. Let's just, just give me. This is season four. Trent, would you believe me if I told you this is a $20,000 prize pool? No, I wouldn't. Well, is it? that is actually the truth. I think seasons one through three were 5K, but the final season is 20K. And by final season, there they, they didn't. There were no points between seasons. It, it was just the last one is worth more because it's the last one. So take that for what it is. Okay, Trent. Uh, game one went the way of clutch gamers. Ten happy feet bring it back. We've got a Rubik Weaver here for CG now on the radiant, and the classic, the old dirty and fest bomb Nix Assassin with the life stealer for happy feet. Ten seconds remaining. Dun -dun. Sorry, I was finishing up my Reddit comment. Because oh. someone was asking me, what's wrong with the 20% experience at level 10 talents? Because I said, when I said this chart made me feel less confident about taking any 20% EXP gains at level 10, but actually made me feel better about some of the later EXP gain talents. Nice stuff. And they said, what's wrong with the 20 EXP? And I just said, like, look at the numbers. I feel like it's long-term goals. It's just not as effective as I would have guessed. It's not. I don't think they're terrible. I right. just, they're not as amazing as I thought because I see it early and I'm just like, I have to get this. It right. means I need this, <laughs> the value. Like really you're marveling at the difference between reality and your expectations. It's yeah. not necessarily a judgment on how good or bad it is. It, you know, especially because of how Dota is so much about feel that you yeah. see these numbers and you're just like, Oh, maybe I, you know, I could change my feels based on this. Yeah. Well, not only is it about feel, but it's, it's also about situations. A lot of things are extremely situational in Dota, but the here we go. Of Speaking of situational, the ice princess herself, crystal maiden. All right. Um, I would call her non-situational because she's the best. Oh, oh go, go, all go, the go. time. Because Brilliant Sora is good on every hero. But Nick's Assassin, one of them uh, that, that likes it quite a bit, he is renowned yes. for his HP regen. One of the reasons why he's able to stand in the offlane is the bug that he is. But uh, having extra mana regen on him means more mana burns and means less mana for the other team. So it's like a compounding victory, man. The synergy is really blowing my Amazing. mind. Amazing. Uh, it's also because uh, in lane, generally, you can't even afford to have mana burn. But there's a lot of matchups that when you have the Crystal Maiden, you can actually use your mana burn, and Weaver will be a great one. Uh, it's only 60 mana to use Shikuchi, but if you're just nonstop burning him, you can actually have an impact, and you can make it very difficult for the Weaver to lane. You only get it level 1. You don't have to scale it up or anything. You just go 3-1-1 instead of 3-0-2 uh, in your first five levels as Nyx, and you're pretty happy. Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Um, they have the Nyx... Life Sealer combo as well, mm -hmm. a classic. Yep. Uh, Probably going to pick Ricky. A lot, uh, lot of crustaceans, a lot of bugs this game here. There Same are a King lot of bugs Weaver. this game. Now Who's on missing? Gamers. Are there are there any other bugs? I heard the Horn of Magnus. Oh, there he still is. In, eh? There he is. So that becomes either a uh, a mid-Magnus or potentially a, uh, a four-roll Nyx Assassin. <laughs> That would be. Oh, now they have an invoker though. That that almost Dyer like makes me confident enough to take a four roll next. Yeah, like um, I'm good enough against this hero. This is worth it. Really bold to pick invoker into this. Uh, Nick's really good against any hero that has a lot of int gain that scales with int items. So obviously invoker Ten fits the bill there. Remaining. Rubik similarly. Um, I think um, why they're willing to do it is because they see this. They see Nyx and they see Magnus. So only one of these he heroes does. can go to the offlane. So they're like, okay, well, if you're going to go Nyx offlane and you're going to scale him up quickly and he's going to be very obnoxious against my invoker when he's at more of those um, crucial levels from like 8 to like 15 or something and that's when your Nyx is also going to be at a high level and you're going to be very, you know, annoying, um, then yeah, that's going to suck for me. But that means that uh, your Magnus is going to be mid and I'm going to own him. 
But if your Magnus is in the off lane and this Nyx Assassin is support, he's not going to come online very fast. You guys will have to pick up some other sort of a matchup against us in the mid lane. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be okay as an invoker. So it's like, yes, Nyx is a counter, but if you're not putting him in the core role, we're not as scared. Radiant team yeah. Or even if you do put him in the core role, I'm going to have an easier time against a Magnus. Does Invoker roll over Magnus mid? I feel like Magnus with poor man I don't think he rolls him. Kind of Magnus gets frame. farm, but he um, Invoker gets to farm is the most important thing, I yeah. would say. Okay. I Plus, see. if he's positioned for a Nyx, he can't roam mid well at all. And it's like, if you know it's a... If, yeah, I see. If you know it's Magnus mid, you're not going to stop the Magnus from farming, but you know he can't do anything to stop you from farming, really, whatsoever. Yeah. So... I if I you. had to guess, I would ban Ricky because I would be more scared about a Nyx offlane, Magnus mid with a Ricky because they need one other Empower hero. Um, okay, PA. So they're thinking it'll be a PA mid then. That would have been good. Probably. They could still just jug mid for Happy Feet into the Invoker too. If uh... Are you positive that they're not going to do position for Nyx mid Magnus and then pick an offlaner here? No. No, I'm not. Really? Okay. That, they could that... just do that too. That's sort of the angle that I'm coming from, but I also just haven't seen Happy Feet. I don't know how they like to run Nyx. Do they have a preference? Do they normally put him off lane? Uh, I, not that I can really recall. Like I don't know if, yeah. I, I feel like I, the it seldom bits like, I um, see Nyx, he's often in a four. It looks like they usually do, uh, in their pro Dota games, they've been doing a lot of CM Nyx support duo. So, so it does look like they're uh, definitely confident in their support Nyx. Should not rule it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, but uh, but yeah, then. So uh, I would be happy with a mid jug for Happy Feet. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Where's the PL, dude? Mid PL against Invoker, the old classic. Please. Classic. Yeah. Mid brood. It's actually not that Invoker. Bad. It's also not. No, that it's good. really not. You're it's stuck fine. with a PL on your team, but. And they have Sand King, who's pretty damn good against Clearing Illusion. Um. What about CGs? They're a better for like is should we put our Sand King in the off lane? He'll be against Life Stealer, Crystal Maiden, and potentially a Nyx Assassin. He I could think, handle that. I think they pick a safe laner here, right? Well, no, because then the Weaver could go safe lane and um Yeah, they can just get a position four if they yeah. want. Basically, I think the question is do we want an off laner hero and Sand Kings are four, or do we want a position four and um I think you want Sand Kings are off lane? I, I think but they, they do usually run a lot of position four sanking, like so that would be the thing. <gasps> Avoid off lane. Or maybe they'll maybe they'll put him solo safe lane against the Magnus. Off off lane weaver with a four sand king. I don't know, man. Maybe they'll just two one two. Weaver sand king in the off lane. Rubik void in the safe lane. This is exciting. Have a lot I never get to see Faces Void anymore. It's true, we don't. Looks like they've run it a couple times lately, though. Um, they tend to run it in a, a safe lane role, it seems. So. Okay. Um, I mean, that makes sense. So you can send Weaver into like, these off lane kind of shenanigans. He'll probably have the Rubik with him, I would guess. Uh, I mean, Faceless shouldn't have too bad of a matchup if it's just the Magnus. Ten seconds remaining. So for Happy Feet. Benj, how do they want to do this? It's the OD. Oh my! So they take the right. big boy. They're still okay. Oh, that's good. That's a different kind of save, actually. That's that's fine. You can astral anyone yep. who's inside the chrono. Um, you don't have to go really wonky with your lanes with like Avenge or something, because Avenge would not synergize with the rest of it, but it would be like kind of okay. Um, this is good. Yeah, that's great. Um, I like OD a lot here. They've got a lot of mana regen now, just in general, with the OD aura on top of CM's aura. Pretty good in power action. You know, OD does a lot of right-clicking. Lifestealer does a lot of right-clicking. Nyx even does a little bit of right-clicking. You know, Vendettas and whatnot, it's nice to have a little extra damage for his burst. So, per usual, in power going to be a big deal, but Clutch Gamers have a lot of options, Trent. A lot of damage to dump into that chrono. Weaver sitting on the outside, shooting his little scarabs, Invoker throwing meatballs, Sand King. Remaining. Being Sand King. <laughs> Kicking up some sand. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think I, I like both of these drafts better th than last game. I think um, I think our underdogs here, Happy Feet, probably have some more options. However, they have some greedy cores, Trent. 
And this worries me a little bit. You know, like, OD and Lifestealer are two heroes that don't do a lot besides damage. Like, yes, OD has the save with Chrono, but really, they're, they're just big damage dealers. And if they don't have at least an okay time in the lane, you can hit this weird mid-game where I think Clutch could just overpower them with team fight while their cores are still trying to come online. You know, same with Nyx. Yeah. Same with Magnus. No, you are not wrong. Someone's likely to have a bad lane here, and that that's going to be tough. Uh, it looks like it will indeed be the solo safe lane void. And they'll just send Gabby up here with some help. This makes sense. This is the most likely way to run your lanes. Pressure onto that life stealer. And a Nyx not going to have fun in these sort of like a support scenarios. I mean, he's kind of okay because he's going to have this poor man shield. So he's just going to play it like a Slardar or a Monkey King or something. And he's just going to like right click you a bunch and try and abuse the fact that he has this high HP regen, which is good. But yeah, his, uh, his stun is obviously much weaker than uh, many other heroes in these trialing scenarios. He basically has to combo up with RR every time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But at the same time, Nyx is one of those heroes that has a lot of style power. And if played properly, you know, a couple of misplays from the other team perhaps in the lane, and Nyx can get that kind of momentum, the CM Aura can definitely assist with that, give him that little edge, as we talked about in the draft, to keep the enemies on low mana, have plentiful stuns. I think the the aura is also very important for Yaj too. I wouldn't mind CM just starting like 30 seconds in, trying to get that arcane aura up as fast as possible. Well trained uh, at one of the camps. Statistically, Happy Feet have already lost. They only got one bounty rune. It's over. GG. What percentage of the time teams that get three bounty runes win the game? I bet it's above 55 percent. I I couldn't tell you. I made that. I up, like this but though. It feels right. RR is doing it. He's starting over here. I don't see enough CMs do this. It's like quickly starting to kill some creeps. Like immediately um, get your aura first going thing. as fast as possible. Yeah. I mean, this is part of the power of CM. I was talking about uh, Coddle yesterday in a similar capacity. Part of the power of that hero is the flexibility to say, okay, this is a slow game. Great. I'm going to go into the jungle and actually farm really efficiently with stacking and illuminates. And CM can similarly do that. Not many supports can just solo kill these big creeps at level one and then stack these camps like this. You know, this is yeah. fairly unique to this hero, and it's great to see him capitalize on it. And now she's level two. I mean, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And got stacks on both camps, oh, so oh. he'll have two more Sorry, big Sorry, guys. Big two camps. experience away. <laughs> wow, that's actually uh, disappointing. Uh, now still. we know. Sorry, guys. I didn't do the math. My centaur, my wild ring. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the key thing here is getting the double stack. Yeah. Because as we know, she's got low in very small mana pool. Got to make sure. And they haven't count. pressured jewels too much. Fine, he's seven last hits without any of his friends. Yeah, he's doing great. Nyx. So it is an aggro try coming out of clutch gamers. Stun from boombox off the money. Rubik pressing forward, trading blows with Jesse Vosh, and not really getting the better side of that exchange. Check in on the bottom lane, Magnus versus Void. Void starting with the Orb of Venom, Poor Man Shield. Should be a pretty good lane for him. He's out CSing the Magnus a little bit right now, but should expect it's this to be relatively even, I think. Yeah, it's going to get very annoying down here, actually, because because of this Arcane Aura. And yet, the fact that RR is committing to these earlier levels, they're going to get Fly Solo First Blood top. Yep. Wow, that was nice. Um, but uh, yeah, the Arcane Aura, like nonstop in power and nonstop Shockwave. And that's that consistent damage over time that faces Void has a hard time dealing with. Yeah, especially in the early levels. You know, once he hits level 5, gets that third point in time walk potentially, becomes a little bit more manageable, but uh, that cooldown really long in these early levels. So often not worth it to spend that for just a, a shock wave, for example. Looks like Yaj is trying to use his shrine soon, so he doesn't want to use his tangos. Been holding on to all five of them for a while. How's this mid lane going? Invoker. Looks to be about as expected. 6-3 against the 10-8 OD. Ben having a pretty good time. Kind of a tough lane for the Invoker. I mean, nobody really lanes that well against OD except maybe Razor. Jesse Vosh with a stun on Boombox. Nice setup trying to stop the Burrow Strike. Does manage to get off the Spike Carapace. It might be enough to keep him alive as Gabby Shikuchiing around trying to do some extra damage. Seems like Clutch Gamers, though, on the defensive. They'll kind of leave Boombox high and dry. Jesse Vosh does find the stun as Gabby. Put some right clicks into RR, but there's a sandstorm back from Boombox, and they are light on detection at the moment. Seems all will survive. As Jesse Vosh continues to chase him down, connects with another impale. 
And the follow-up damage is there. RR with the level three Crystal Nova. All right. CM in the clutch. Watching this faceless void versus Magnus matchup, and even with two points in power, the four man shield is so much work. I think the skewer now, though, so this will help. He knows there's no uh, time walk. Pretty big from Yaj. Oh, Whoa, the bash! <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a time lock for the kill. <laughs> oh, that was sick. Uh, void has also itemized perfectly. He came into the lane with the um, just the two boots. Uh, the slippers, so that he was able to get his forming shield in the side shop. Magnus didn't have that same option, um, so he now has his forming shield, but he didn't have to start with, and that was making the trading very difficult. Yeah. Uh, put him at disadvantage right away. He's the Orb of Venom on the Faceless Void, which he doesn't have. Um, and as we were saying, the damage is still the same, so... Yeah. Consistent damage over time. And honestly, you might get a little more value out of it in these kind of situations, because, you know, the, before it used to stack durations, and now it happens faster. So oh, yeah. Less time saying. where it's stacked up. It's a small thing, but you know, we're talking about the, the Brilliant Sora being enough to have Magnus find an edge in the lane and Void finding ways to compensate for that. As you were saying in yeah. the draft, he's a little bit of a forgotten about hero in some ways. Compared to him in the heyday, at least. So it's, it's nice to see Void see in the light of day. A fun hero, at least in small bits. Armel taking a lot of damage from Ben here in the mid lane. Probably not enough for a kill. Ben, still only level 5. If he had that Sanity's Eclipse, of course, this would be a kill. Can he get in range? He's going to keep chasing, but he backs off. Does not want to dive the Tier 2. Meanwhile, up top, Fly Solo does die. Uh, they go 1 for 1. It'll be a Nyx for Rubik. Yeah, they basically just walked the Rubik down. He just was out of spells. Just got killed. And uh, then the return kill just from diving a little bit deep. So, yeah. A lot of back and forth there in the mid lane, though. OD, just looking at net Chrono board. is ready, bottom. Ooh. They've rotated fly solo, but I don't think they'll have the damage from full HP. No, I think you're right. Oh, the skewer? He oh, gets the that bash. bash might help. Oh, my. He eats the fairy fire first, but now the sun strike comes in. It's a great combo, and they find the kill. Rappy gets the last hit. Maybe hoping to give that to the invoker, but still, they get the kill before the TP rotation can really do much. And that will square it up 3-3. Three to three. Yeah, I forgot about Sunstrike. The classic. Oh, yeah. now Jesse Vash is even taking a few licks here. Limping away. A couple legs down. Mm -hmm. Up top, Jules and Gabby also going at it. Some damage exchanging. Looks like a decent lead for the Radiant, though, up to almost 1,000. Gabby looking at picking up a solo kill, but gets baited into the sentry. Still finishes him off. RR might be able to get this kill. There's no time lapse. But Boombox on his way in will stun the Crystal Maiden. She's out of mana. Even Creeps doing some extra damage here. But both of them getting blocked. He does have mana for the Burrow Strike. It's up in one second. This should be a kill. And he's got it. Good exchange for Clutch Level Gamers. Two open Jules wounds. on he his way back him. in. Uh-oh. Uh, Gabby going to be like trees. a body block play, I think. Oh, he's going to let him go. All right. In comes the Weaver. Very nice. Oh, that's right. Tranquil Boots. I forgot about this change. Mm -hmm. no Holy armor. shit, they are fast. Look at him go back to base. He's cruising. That's actually insane. Wow. 90 movement speed. I mean, that's what? 10 short of bots, right? I'm not crazy? I think so. That is insane. It's pretty fast, Holy. but I mean, there's an opportunity cost, man. No armor. True, but I mean, 14 HP regen. Yeah, it's a worthy trade-off for most heroes. Jewels up More top. More Crystal Maiden buffs, guys. Jules takes another spill. Trent, remember that like uh, worst case scenario I was talking about? It's kind of coming true. Magnus yeah, dying. He's lost bottom now. Up top, Life Stealers died twice. Is that the third time? Nope, just the second. But look at that net worth. He's fallen behind. Very far behind, actually. And mid lane, well, it's, it's going well for the OD. He's 500 net worth up on the Invoker, but Invoker is by no means getting rolled. Yep, because uh, he's Radiant side too. So he just falls back to his camps. He still catches the wave of the tower. He gets most of the gold that way. Uh, he's going to have Sun Strikes the second that uh, Chrono's back up. I'm sure they'll rotate some heroes and try and go again. Boombox is actually already here. So Yaj will use the Shrine, but they could just be eyeing up a kill of Jesse Vash. And, oh, he thought about it. Maybe one Bash. Might have been enough. Yeah, Nyx Assassin only level 4 right now. Still hasn't skilled up Mana Burn. 
been kind of a tough game for him so far. Not really a great tri-lane hero. And this aggro tri coming out of clutch has really worked well. We'll see once more initiation onto RR. Fly solo. Actually now the, the target of the open wounds. He drops the fade bolt. But Jules is there with the rage. And he'll be able to finish him off. Sunstrike does connect on Crystal Maiden. And now Gabby will dive it. Finds himself another kill. They go one for one. Time lapse back into the sentry. But Jesse Vosh just now gets the stun. I wonder if they'll try and maybe rotate him down bottom a little bit more. They, they kind of have been. Like, Yaj is now level 7. He's got 2 points in the Empower, 4 points in the Shockwave. He can juggle very quick. And try and get your Nyx to 6 that way, but... Rappy still looking for more Bashes here. Really wants to open this up for a Sunstrike. Up top, a lot of damage being oh, nice traded. Stun. There's the Sunstrike. Beautiful setup from Boombox on 2. Jules getting very low. He has to rage. He doesn't have Infest either. They're going to continue to pressure this. And Gabby slowed down from the Crystal Nova. Jules playing Ring Around the Rosie. It's a two on three in the Shikuchi. A little bit too much. But the Frostbite from CM, still not enough. It, it, it does keep the Life Stealer alive. So a minor victory. Yaj here misses oh, the Shockwave. Oh, it was so close. He's not got RP. He hasn't skilled oh. it up. Oh, well, welcome no. to Dota 2, guys, where you can just highlight the hero and see he doesn't have RP. I guarantee that's what just happened there, because there's no way Gabby goes in if he thinks he has RP. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I thought he had RP at first, too. Why didn't he skill it? Uh, it's pretty common for Magnus. If you're not going to be rotating, if you think you're going to be doing more jungling stuff, um, I mean, and just trying to get yourself up to those early yeah. levels in gold. No, I know what you mean. The, those early levels where you're spending time in the jungle, RP just sits sits there but i think that also means that you don't make those rotations without the rp you know maybe if he's right about to hit level eight you can come in shockwave some creeps roll over and then get the rp that's a play but that's a big commitment knowing that you don't really have an exit strategy or, or any sort of big lockdown Oh, Rappi's going to get some free time to tower here with the DD rune. This is nice, but top lane, that's where the action is. Yep, Gabby gets finished off, just goes in a little bit too deep, and they click him down. Life Stealer flexes his muscles a little bit there, a much-needed kill. They're going to need a little bit more than that, but it's a step in the right direction as more rotations come from Clutch Gamers. Still like a 3k net worth lead or so. I mean, all three of their cores, number one on net worth. Speaking of net worth... Uh, looks like Ben will still be opting for the Midas. The nerf can't uh, can't send OD away. Some of those mid-tier kind of Midas heroes, I'm not sure exactly how that nerf will help, um, affect them. Invoker, I think um, everyone just assumes they're still going to buy Midas. Yeah. Uh, iconic, necessary levels just give you so much value it, on it this hero. It still does give you an experience advantage, just not as much as before. So it, it, right. it still fits the profile. It fits the bill. Invoker is also a hero that definitely benefits from the attack speed. You know, as he scales into the game, those right clicks become a, a significant portion of what he does. So I, I think it fits him very well. Uh, but you're right. There are definitely some heroes that I, I wish I had a good example, but there's got to be a few that now Midas is just less desirable because it's, it's much more of an economic tool than a level tool. wonder if it'll uh, cause some people to go for the 30% EXP gain on the Invoker. I've always, I know, I've talked to a couple of different Invoker players, like Shane especially. He just hates it. He's like, you need the Forge Spirit. He loves his little buddies. Well, uh, it kind of gives you that feel of the old days, right? Because didn't it used to be two Forge Spirits by default or something? Yeah, I, I if think you they just had the certain along. levels of Quas or whatever, right? Same thing with the AoE Deafening Blast or whatever, right? You yeah. just hit the level and but there like it was. Two or three years ago, Forge Spirits were a lot more broken than they are now. Like they used to work on Roche, for example, and then they changed it, I think. It might be bullshitting, but I, I feel like I think that's... they still work on Roche, but they were they were definitely stronger. Maybe they're, they 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 do half damage to Roche. There is some some change there. I mean, they've changed the way Roche interacts with ar um, minus armor a whole bunch of times. I'll be honest, yeah. Trent. Keeping up with Dota mechanics is it's, it's almost like one. it's a full time job. I <laughs> <clears throat> actually went for the uh, the bracer, old school CM. Wow. But um, is he gonna go? He could just get drums. I mean, it's not a bad drums thinking. game. You have an OD. It's very valuable. You have Empower. Also very valuable. Or I wouldn't hate it. 20. Stun up top. Sunstrike misses, though. And now stolen Impale from Fly Solo. Great combo. 
Weaver level going four too. Mm. For the no boots build here, just gonna go straight Dragon Lance, work up those stats and regen. Pretty much all a Weaver needs at these early levels. Mid lane, oh, Rappy comes forward, he is. gets himself a bash. OD drops the hammer on Armel, but they don't get the kill. A couple uphill misses will not stop them from finding the counter kill the other way. Yaj has oh, the RP Rappy. now. Oh. Rappy, he's just styling on the Magnus right now. Bash after bash, it is level four, so 25% oh, chance, again. but my God, that felt like a lot more than one out of four. <laughs> he was mid skewer. He was like charging his little horn. I think he would've got caught in the skewer anyway, and he probably still would've killed him on the high ground. And that was just absurd still. <laughs> yep. The uh, courier gets picked off. That is an armlet for jewels recipe. That's actually big. Yeah, nice warden. All right, spots it immediately. Nice find. Yep. Uh oh, more vision. A lot of wards up here. This sentry <laughs> out of range of this set. Jesse Vosh comes in. Boombox could be in some trouble here. Stun across, but Jules is raged up. Sunstrike connects. RR will die to fly solo, maybe. Gabby in the back line starting to lay in the right clicks. They know Jules doesn't have rage, but Jesse Vosh sets it up with the stun, and it looks like a good trade here for Happy Feet as Gabby Shikuchi's away. They will not be able to pursue. All right. Just Man, imagine Rappies. if Jules had an armlet. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, yeah, that's actually what my whole conversation was going to be about. was going to be about just the Midas. We've seen so many Midas first um, life stealers, And so I wasn't sure if, like, because number one, he was having a kind of a rough game. Um, and number two, again, just another thing with the nerf and, the, and whatnot. But it looks like Jules is now considering going back for it after his uh, armlet here. Gabby up top going in pretty deep. Time lapses some damage. I'll take your Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Chrono still on cooldown for 30 as the RP comes out. Rappy not able to time walk out. He drops the time dilation. Stolen though. RP. Wow. There what it a is. player. Saves his faceless void. There it is. That's huge. Oh, that's so irritating. And now Rappy's just like full HP again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got this Vlad, too, the 5.7 HP regen, just base. Uh, very hard to send him back home, and he's working on a Shadow Blade, so gonna have some great initiation for himself. Yeah. Yep, kind of this or the Blink Dagger, but as we've seen, you know, sort of with Magnuses as well, the, the Shadow Blade is just a, a little bit of everything. Damage, attack speed, gives you that initiation power, and also some escape power if you get caught. Here we go, up top, nice Sunstrike to follow up. Jules will die as Boombox also channels the Epicenter. Also in the bottom lane, looks like Chronosphere was used as they set up a kill onto OD. So two for nil across the map. The two big cores, position one and position two of Happy Feet taking a tumble. Unfortunate for the Dire. Clutch Gamers, they seem to have Happy Feet's number. Yeah. This would be six games in a row that they defeat them. Again, despite the fact that you know, like Happy Feet went 3-0 in this group stage <laughs> and 2-0 and Clutch Gamers the last time they met in SC at Kappa. Oh, my. From bad to worse here, Yessi Vosh. Yessi Vosh. <laughs> Caught by the Sunstrike. It's another one up for RML. Oh, we're four seconds away from an armlet being delivered to Jules, so we can finally feel effective. Uh, maybe get himself a uh, infest bomb, gank, go around with this so, success and try and find the invoker. Trent, let me draw a parallel here, right? Uh, game, draw it for me. Game number Sketch one. Sketch me a picture, Bob Ross. G game number one, we saw that Shadow Blade get, uh, get killed on the courier, right? Maybe yeah. we're going to have to hold this thought as there are a couple of fights breaking out. Gabby and Jules going blow for blow. Jules on the run. He's got him on the ropes. Oh, God. He jumps inside of a creep. Oh Courier my God. finished off by me. Gabby. It dies Imagine again. Imagine the armlet didn't get there. <laughs> okay, he gets his armlet at least, and Gabby will die for this. But I think uh, fairly happy with that, given that five heroes also rotate. A big commitment for Happy Feet. Yeah, still worth it for them, though, I think, especially just morality. Morale. Or moral. Team, team morale, that is. <laughs> yes. Um. So anyway... Courier dies in game one that has the Shadow Blade on it, so Slark spends three extra minutes delayed where he has to farm instead of fight. This game, pretty much the same thing happens to Life Stealer. recipe for the armlet. I would say the armlet recipe, much more crippling to the momentum of this Life Stealer than the Shadow Blade was for the momentum of that Slark. Do you agree or disagree, Trent Pax? Uh, I think the Slark one was actually worse. I think you can rotate if what? you really want to without the armlet. 
Well, maybe yeah. it's a matter of execution. But the Shadow Blade's like way more important, I think, for Slark. Slark can't even rotate without it. Well, like, that's he the needs thing. it to initiate. But Slark just farmed right through it. Like he doesn't well, need it to stay Life alive because he still have. has pounce and he still has dark pack. Jewels up top. Oh, speak of the devil. He's dead again. Armlet not going to save him from the Chrono Sphere. Kind of unfortunate, but like Armlet is like a key survivability tool for the Life Stealer. Like also well, a Shadow mark. Blade for a Slark. That's no. why he doesn't leave. Lane. Like he can run away and he can like kill someone who's in his lane, but he wants to rotate around the map. You still want Shadow Blade on Slark. I'm just saying they could have done Infest Ganks without Armlet. Well, you're right. Because the Jesse Vash had a lot of levels. Like, you're right. He's level 10. They could have. That's that's where the failed execution comes in, I think, for sure. Uh, and Infest yeah. Bombs are I don't great. think it was the item's fault in this case. Yeah, okay. I, I could agree with that. But I think the Armlet is more key to Lifestealer being able to do anything. And the Shadow Blade is key for Slark to be able to fight. But he can still farm in lane and destroy neutrals and do all that kind of stuff. And Ben here in the mid lane, he'll get caught. Easy dive. And they'll probably be able to finish him off after the Astral. Nice tornado. But RP on two. Maybe Yaj can turn this around. But it's stolen oh, again, again from old Ruby Tuesday. More style points go the way of Fly Solo as he saves his team once more. And this is the train that does not stop. Here we go, and Fest Bomb onto Armel. They've got the damage, and they'll find a big kill. It's a 6x streak. Jules getting credit for that one. Can they get any more? Rappy does not have the chrono. Out? Come on, Jules. You can do this. Armlet toggle, but no. It's another bash at the perfect time. Everything turning up Millhouse for clutch gamers. Man, dude. Other teams need to, like, phone them up. And be like, yo, guys, what are you doing against Happy Feet? Can I get some advice here? What, What is it? They are destroying them again. I mean, this feels like, honestly, they've gotten into their heads a little bit. You it know? feels like it's not even on the same tier of Dota. They look like they're on a different tier. This looks like if I'm watching EG play against complexity X team that I don't want to flame. Um, hey, that's just rude. Is it? Yeah, they're not. They're not different tiers. Who keeps winning those matchups, huh? Well, besides our show match, it's usually complexity, to be fair. Is it? At least lately. Have I don't they know. been playing? At Boston Major. Oh, at the Boston Major. Okay, well. Oh, yeah. the ma oh, the Major. That wasn't an important tournament. No, it's it, it's important, but yeah. Except I mean, it's group stage. Who cares about group stage? Magnus! Wow, cool guys. Don't even look, man. He just He's walking away before the Sunstrike even hits. Yeah, the style points. But this is the point. It's it's the unchecked aggression. Like right now, clutch gamers. I mean, they've got a big lead. It's like fifteen thou or ten thou, whatever. No big deal. But they're playing this just like guys. This is easy. If we just all dive him right now, he's gonna <laughs> die. Like, did you see that OD? He wasn't even in an aggressive position. The tower's still alive. OD's like back here, and the teams here they just go right in, right in without any hesitation. It's great. Yeah. They they have that confidence, you know. All they're doing is just like sitting on Chrono. They just wait for it and they're like, oh, Chrono's up, guys. It reminds me of 2013 Arteezy playing Shadow Fiend, just blind blinking over trees, just like, I'm ready to fucking go right now, bro. Where are you at? Just unreal. <laughs> like when you look at the plays from his his perspective, like that insane confidence. Yeah, the KP Slardar from yeah. uh, Manila Major Qualifiers. Yeah, man. And here we go. Gabby initiated on. Yaj coming in for the RP, but again. can't get it. Boombox in the clutch again. A huge epicenter stun follow-up. Jules trying to do what he can, but he gets locked down and brought down. RR channels the ult, but takes an astral from Ben to try to stay alive. He gets bashed. Rappi sets it up for a five for nil complete the team The crazy wipe. thing is he doesn't even have blink on Fly Solo. He doesn't have blink. How does he keep doing this? Like, I mean, at that time he didn't even have to steal the RP because he was still just holding it from last time. But he didn't even have Blink. Yeah. How does he just get the counter RP every time? He just he walks up. Blink. He just it's does not it. Impossible. Who is this man? <laughs> Trent, this like game that's... is over, dude. I mean, this yeah, is just done. a slaughter. Twenty-one I minutes. A fork in it. Sorry, Happy Feet. It's time to zip him up. Chrono's up in five seconds here, boys. I mean, they've got an RP. They've got a Sanity's Eclipse. OD has the Midas. He's going to throw it at him. Sunstrike. Zoning Sunstrike. Here we go. RP connects on two. But Chrono breaks up the fight. And now Jules 
the four focus of it heroes. all. The stolen Astral, he gives OD a spoonful of his own medicine, Mary Poppins style, as now the hammer comes. It just tickles, it drains the mana, and it's stolen from the Rubik. He turns it back the other way. Fly solo with the nonstop big steals, keeping CG in this fight. They're still reasonably healthy as Gabby maybe goes in a bit too deep, does not have the Shikuchi. Boombox with a stun on two into the, uh, the what's it called, Sandstorm. There it is, but there was a Sentry Ward down, and he will just suicide into uh, his own grave here. They still finish off the melee barracks, so uh, not, not bad for clutch gamers, but a little sloppy at the end, and they do hand over about 2,500 net worth to Happy Feet. Damn. That was intense. Two melee racks down. Dude, honestly, this Rubik is playing out of his fucking mind, though. I know, and he doesn't have items. It's crazy. It's actually unbelievable. Like, I keep double-checking to make sure I'm not, like, bugged or something and not seeing a Blink Dagger with the plays he's making. I mean, it's also just... He just solo smoked on that ward. Now Jesse Vash yeah. will find him. I mean, like, Spell Steal, he doesn't have an Ag. Oh, it's on an 18-second cooldown. <laughs> but he's had every... every spell that he's needed. And it's not even just ultimates, right? Like, he has RP, and then, oh, the Chrono's there. OD's walking up, ready to stop the Void from killing his Life Stealer. Rubik's like, oh, wait... I've already got the Astral ready, you idiot. Puts him in the Astral. OD comes out of the Astral. He's got Spell Steel ready for the ultimate. Instantly steals it and turns it back. Fly Solo will take a spill in the mid as I'm uh, stroking him here. He's a little too far forward, but... Say la vie. Say la vie. Jesse Bosch will fall as a counter kill, so at least it was not in vain. But just well, really we impressive. Could roast here, guys. That would be easy peasy. And in they go. If I was betting on Vulcan right now, I would definitely put this Rubik in my lineup. I'll tell you what. Would he be your shot caller? I don't know. I don't know if you really want to pick a support. <laughs> oh, solo Chrono onto the CM. OD tries to save. Doesn't even call for the Sun Strike. He's like, unnecessary. Sorry, I was drinking latte and watching Roche. That's my bad. <clears throat> okay. That was a little bit of an unnecessary Sun Strike, or uh, Chrono, to be honest. <laughs> Just, again, putting the fear in him. Now he's just going to Shadow Blade and walk at them. All right. This is one of those games, though, where I understand why OD wants to get the Midas, and maybe it'll... You know, this game's probably pretty over. I mean, but it could still pay off. OD, also a hero that benefits a lot from the attack speed, but I just look at this like, what if he had a Force Staff? You know, that, that extra int makes a big difference on a hero like this. That extra mobility makes a huge difference. He just feels like he's, he doesn't do enough. Not enough yeah. control. Also, Manta up on the void. Yeah, again, he's just one of those heroes that, you know, lane winner, and then he just wants a five man a lot, and he goes later than Viper, but he suffers from a lot of the same things. Yep. Fly solo. Uh oh. Skewers the Magnus down, and then Magnus skewers himself back up. Kind of a cool back and forth there. Sun Strike yeah, off the Ben's mark, dead. but this OD, he is done for. He comes out of the Astral, and nowhere to go. Chronosphere up in 40. So not going to have it for this fight. Jesse Vosh pretty far forward. He's got the Infest Bomb, but Yaj, he gets caught. He's trying to pump oh fake the RP, God. but he can't get it off. Oh, the Cold Snap is too much. Has now been in big, big trouble. He's bought back, and this is likely to be a dieback. The Astrals buys himself a little more time, but it just sets up for a meatball. Boombox living up to his name as he channels the epicenter. Meanwhile, on the back line, it's Jesse Vosh and Rappi. But oh look, there's a sentry ward down. Of course, Rappi finds the bash. I hear a sun strike, and looks like it's off, but doesn't matter, Trent, because we've got a GG. Happy feet have had enough, and the, the beating will end there. Yeah, Uncle, please. Woo! Like, get me out. That's ridiculous. I can't, just can't even believe how much they just destroyed them. What an impressive display from Clutch Gamers. Yep. Living up to their name. The young squad. Filipino squad, I believe, right? Uh, I don't actually know. I mean, who's even... It's only racist if I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. They, they I mean, I just ask chat, they all know. <laughs> they sure oh, do. Oh, his great-grandmother was Filipino. It's their <laughs> great... Filipino game. <laughs> it's their job to know. Man, Gabby yeah, man. went absolutely nasty. They're proud like fans, him. man. It's great. Yeah. 19k damage on the Weaver. Well, wow. Another I'm, good day I look forward Kappa. to more Clutch Gamers. Because I've been hearing about them over at the Summit, and I'm like, hmm. Clutch Gamers doing well at the Summit. I'm like, yeah. well, how are they doing well over there? They just get destroyed in C-Kappa. And I look at the chart, they're, they're like undefeated. 
They they lost. They dropped one match to Geek Fam, and they two owed uh, Happy Feet. They look great. All and right. now they're gonna play a Clutch Gamer. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Playoffs. All that remain here for C Kappa Season Four. When do they start, Trent? Do we know? Is there a schedule? Probably not. Uh, no, there is not currently. Okay. You think it'll be before the major? God, I hope so, but probably not. Will it? Hard to say. I could see it. Uh, I could see it either way. I mean, it's there are currently weird, no man. dates. How far away is the major? The major is very close. Well, so okay, the major is yeah, it's pretty soon. I think it starts like April twenty second. Did I make those uh, dates up? Is it? Oh, it starts the twenty seventh. Okay, it's 27th. not that close. Oh, but no, wait, that's the main event. Yeah. So the group stage is like question mark, question mark, but it's probably about the 22nd. 22nd be like five days before. Yeah. Maybe they leave on the 20th. Yeah. Something like that. So. 10 days. Yeah. I mean, they could. It really And depends. it's a really short playoff, right? 